this is going to be my biggest animal rescue I've ever done. You are not going to believe me when I tell you this. There are currently 11 innocent seals in prison. And no, I don't mean like a metaphorical prison. I mean literally behind bars. And you're probably wondering, what could seals possibly do to end up as prisoners? What crime could a seal commit? The answer is simple. There is no crime. The seals were born into this prison, just like their six generations of families before them. These seals were born in prison, and these seals will die in prison. Their children will be born in prison and die in prison, and they're allowed to be kept and to be used for money and human entertainment. I first visited this facility to film an octopus for a YouTube video I was working on. But what started out as a fun octopus video quickly turned into a mission to help 11 helpless seals who are living in disgusting, unfair, and dangerous conditions. My mission with this video is to raise awareness and bring to light the unjust treatment of these amazing sea animals. This prison isn't in some faraway country. It's actually in the same state that I live in, Oregon. It's literally right down the road from me. And this facility is called the Seaside Aquarium. Now I know a lot of people might think, oh, he said aquarium, it's not a prison. The difference between this aquarium and other aquariums is that it makes SeaWorld look like an animal paradise. But hey, don't take my word for it. Let's go into the Seaside Aquarium right now so you can see for yourself. Any trays of fish to feed the seals for $2? Two, Two trays. When you enter the aquarium, the seals are the main attraction. And along with buying your tickets, you're offered to buy fish to feed the seals. You then make your way to the seal enclosure where there is absolutely no encouragement from any of the staff members to wash your hands before feeding these seals. There's also virtually no supervision of the seal feeding as most of the staff are busy running the counter or the gift shop. This was a major red flag to us. Allowing this unsanitary hand feeding presents a danger to these animals as there are illnesses that are transmittable between seals and humans. We met up with Amber Becerra, who's the president of the Marine Mammal Care Center based in Los Angeles, where they rescue, rehabilitate, and release hundreds of marine mammals every year. So we are a temporary facility for these animals. They're not staying there long term. That being said, um, you know, we do have certain standards that we adhere to when taking care of these animals. Uh, the biggest one is obviously safety. These animals have uh, what's called zoonotic diseases, which means they can be transmittable from human to animal. And so, you know, we're both mammals and these animals have things like rabies, leptospirosis, and um, these are very dangerous conditions if a human was to acquire these illnesses. So we take certain safety precautions like um, constantly cleaning our hands, wearing gloves whenever we come into contact with these animals, bleaching surfaces, bleaching our feet every time we go in and out of a pen. Obviously just like incredible amounts of safety conditions to make sure that we don't get bit. So we have boards anytime we come close to these animals and obviously all of our staff is very highly trained. No one other than our staff members would ever feed an animal. Uh, things like this are designed because there is the risk for a transmittable disease. With the science to prove disease spread is possible between humans and marine mammals, this aquarium continues to put these animals and its visitors at risk with their lack of safety precautions. And Seaside Aquarium is no stranger to seals and other marine life. This aquarium has been around for over three quarters of a century. Opening in 1937, it is the oldest privately owned aquarium on the West Coast. They've also established the first program to breed captive harbor seals and allowing the public to feed its seals. They started breeding captive harbor seals in 1952 and have continued ever since. Seaside Aquarium has now bred six generations of harbor seals to live out their entire lives in these small pools of the aquarium. As somebody who helps seals on a regular basis, what are your first impressions on what I've explained to you and uh, the video clips that I've shown you? So honestly, when you first started telling me about this, I was picturing an enclosure for these animals that was less than desirable, dirty water, and maybe something where it was crowded. And I was not even contemplating 
basically the prison cell that you actually showed me when I saw you in person. I mean, I, I've never seen anything like that before. It's honestly despicable conditions for these animals. It's so incredibly narrow um, for, you know, 11 or 12 seals to be trapped in that space without any exposure to sunlight. It's ac absolutely horrific. I, I honestly don't even have words. It makes me sick to see that. It all boils down to the quality of life of the animals. You know, if you were to compare the Oregon Coast Aquarium to the Seaside Aquarium, strictly based on the animals' habitats, their environments, it would be night and day. Beyond the seals, beyond the, the main issue at hand here, we have the other animals at the Seaside Aquarium. You have an octopus, you have fish, you have sharks, they're all in these enclosures, and these enclosures are all identical. Dark, gloomy rocks, no vegetation. Really, the bare minimum. There's salt water, and it's enclosed. Let's contrast that to Oregon Coast Aquarium. Take, for example, some of their fish exhibits. You have bright, beautiful, stimulating colors. You have fish that are lively, fish that are swimming around, fish that aren't just floating zombie fish. <laughs> In other words, that's what they are. But when it comes to the marine mammals, all 11 of these seals that are living in, in this enclosure, yes, they do have a back room that they're able to go to, that the public is not allowed access to, and previous requests to view these back areas have been unacknowledged and denied. The area where the seals spend most of their time is nothing compared to, say, the Oregon Coast Aquarium. The Oregon Coast Aquarium has maybe a handful of seals and sea lions swimming around in a big, deep, open pool with obstacles, with colors, with professional stimulation and interaction. The seals at the Oregon Coast Aquarium do have direct sunlight, whereas the seals at the Seaside Aquarium are getting it a little bit of sunlight through the window, but it's not direct sunlight and it's limited. So comparing the Oregon Coast Aquarium to the Seaside Aquarium, just based on physical observations, you can see there's a huge difference. It was just very dark and unclean and no one looked like they had enough room in there. Like the fish, all the fish were just kind of laying on the ground of their little exhibits and they did not look happy at all. It was kind of a smaller aquarium, which wasn't a bad thing, but it was really like dark and dingy. It didn't look really clean and like the animals looked kind of sad and it like the aquarium itself like the tanks they were in looked very dirty and it just didn't look well kept. There was not much space for the animals or for the people and we noticed a lot of like the seals on the glass were leaking so there were a few that actually had like water going down and there were glass that was like cracked that you could tell had been like kind of sealed up. Have you ever been to another aquarium besides this one before? Yes and I would say every other one I've been to is better. <laughs> We also found something very surprising by doing a little bit more research and digging around online. There's an aquarium in California called Morro Bay Aquarium that was shut down in 2018. We're gonna show you a series of pictures and you decide how similar the Morro Bay Aquarium is to the Seaside Aquarium.
These two aquariums have several similarities. At both aquariums, you're able to purchase fish to feed to the seals, and they both have small enclosed exhibits for their animals. We've also reached out to the Seaside Aquarium in regards to the additional living space that the seals have in the back, just to get a little bit more information on it, and just to know for sure that these seals have a better place to go besides this one holding tank. Our emails and questions have gone unanswered, even though we gave them over a month to reply. Most of the animals at the Seaside Aquarium don't have exhibits that even remotely resemble what a wild natural habitat would look like. And for this to be their permanent exhibit, their permanent home, that's not okay with us. The octopus that they have on exhibit is trapped in a small shallow pool with nowhere to hide. This naturally reclusive and shy animal is surrounded by people and bright lights. This is not the living situation that any octopus should be subject to. The seals are confined to this small pool that's barely even deep enough for them to swim around in, and they're forced to perform tricks and acts in order to have fish thrown at them all day. How does this even remotely resemble their natural habitat? On their website, the Seaside Aquarium states that these seals don't beg for their food, but based on our observations at the facility, we beg to differ. We're gonna show you a clip of what really goes on in the facility, and you can be the judge. Now also note that it's a federal crime to harm, disturb, or feed this species of seals out in the wild. So why is it okay to do it at this facility? What is the purpose of a facility holding the animals? Some aquariums have positive motives, such as educating the public or animal rehabilitation. But there's a, another form of education going on here that they're overlooking, and that's the co-mingling of proper education and mistreatment of animals. So you have young kids going in there learning about animals and how to treat them and, and what their lives are like, but then at the same time, those same children are learning how not to treat animals. If you have a dog, do you keep your dog in a dirty kennel all day and let strangers feed it to make a quick buck? That's not something we want to raise our kids and future generations to do. They're teaching positive things about the animals outside of the aquarium, and they're teaching positive things about some of the animals inside of the aquarium, but they're also teaching neglect and unfair treatment. And I think that's very dangerous to teach both because uh, children and even adults could become confused on the right way and the wrong way to treat animals. Try to picture yourself in their situation. You were born in a room that you will never leave. The only window looking out to the real world is obstructed by metal bars. All day, you have people coming in and throwing fish at you with their dirty hands. You have no choice about the food you eat or who feeds it to you or what bacteria or germs are contaminating your food. The Seaside Aquarium says that the seals choose to stay in this small, shallow, dirty, disgusting pool the majority of the time because people are throwing fish and feeding them. And we're expected to believe that the additional living area that they have in the back is better than this tank up front where they're choosing to spend the majority of their time. If their additional room in the back was any better, wouldn't they be spending the time there? Another question I have is who's regulating the amount of food these seals are eating. My thoughts is there could possibly be overfeeding or underfeeding. Another crazy but very possible scenario is what if there was somebody who wanted to hurt the seals, went over and spent $2 and purchased some fish that they could feed and decided they wanted to put drugs or another foreign substance in the fish and throw it to the seal. The seals catch the fish in midair without even thinking, they just eat it. The Seaside Aquarium has been open for 70 plus years. They have thought about this. They've thought about that scenario, but they have chosen to do nothing about it. 
They have no regulations. They didn't check my hands. They didn't check my friend's hands. They didn't check anybody's hands or supervise any of the feeding the entire time we were there. How can you say you care about an animal's well-being if you let strangers feed your animals without any supervision or any precautions in place? The answer is they don't. And this is the sixth generation of these seals that were born and raised in captivity. And the sad reality is, is this is never going to stop unless we do something. Now, I'm not saying we should shut this aquarium down. I'm not saying that they should completely remove these seals from their exhibit. Even though that's what I personally want, that's not what I'm gonna ask. What we wanna ask for is just some change, some precautions. Upgrade your sink, get running clean water for people to wash their hands in before feeding the seals. Have your employees supervise the feeding to make sure that nothing gets fed to the seals that's not supposed to be fed to the seals. These are very, very basic things. And yes, I know they're not required by law, but you shouldn't do it because it's legal. You should do it because you care. Another basic request would be to provide more stimulation to the animals at the facility. Maybe make the public aware of what the additional living area of the seals is like so that we can have our questions answered. We are paying customers. We deserve basic answers to basic questions. The animals deserve to be protected and the public needs to know that they are being properly cared for. And right now, we don't know. What we can see is not good. And what we can only imagine is even worse. So my request for the Seaside Aquarium, if you genuinely care about the animals at your facility, prove it. Make a change. Make these basic changes. The animals deserve it. The countless negative complaints and reviews deserve to be answered. These are real concerns that people have for real animal lives. So until we get a response from the aquarium and we see a real change in favor of the animals, I'm urging you, the public, to avoid supporting the Seaside Aquarium and their mistreatment of animals.